Hey everybody, do you have trouble making greens? Wait, don't run. This kind of trouble is lots of fun. Okay, we're going to make some greens today. I don't buy greens. I make my greens. Green can be a huge problem on a palate for anyone. The problem with most greens is that when you buy greens, they have so many biases and so many greens and so many things happen with the pre-bought ones that they're hard to control. But if you make your own greens, you can control your own greens. Let's go down to the palette. All right, so first off, all I'm gonna use to make the greens today, three yellows, two blues, and a red. The red is the opposite of green. It's going to be the one that tempers the green and calms it down. I'm gonna add a little white to lighten some of it. And just by the by, I'm using the new sunflower white from Graham, which is a little bit warmer of a white. I really like it for mixing greens. All right, with the series of greens, uh, that I'm going to make. I'm just using three yellows, a neutral red to, to temper the greens, two blues. I'm going to make some warm greens, I'm going to make some cool greens, and probably in between you're going to find a few neutral greens, but I'm going to mix a whole variety of greens just to show you in an instant how many greens you can get by just using the colors on your palette anyways without having to buy greens. So we're going to start over here with the warm green. For the warm green, what I'm using is Cad Yellow Deep. Most yellows have a green bias to them anyways and want to go really, really green to the cool side. So if you want to make greens that are warm for warmer greens for fall time, for, for sunnier lit greens then, you probably want to go to the Cad Yellow Deep. So if I just take my blue, little Cad Yellow Deep here. Right here, right away, nice mid green, right there. And I could just take a little bit more blue to that and drop that right down over to here. And I get the same thing with adding more blue, I get a cooler color. Now, if I add a little bit of, if I add a little bit of white to this, you'll see here. I can get a really nice lighter, warmer green coming out of there. And if I go to the blue side and add a little bit of white to it as well, I can also get a nice cool green that's coming out of there. Now with the addition of red to that, I can really start to neutralize this green down and I get some of those really nice gray greens in there look at this beautiful soft green right there look at that that's beautiful faraway trees right there look at that all the way from warm all the way to cool and I have only used one blue one yellow and a little bit of red right in there so we can go now and try another green If I go over here to the cooler blue with the addition of this uh, cad yellow light in here, look at this. I can make a really, really bug gut green right there. I can lighten that off a little bit. I can even push that way over to the yellow side. Spring greens, gra fresh grass. Anything like that, I can get that to be really, really light over there. If I add a little bit of warm yellow to it, I can get a spring green that's a little bit warmer over towards the neutral end of things, but it's a little bit warmer here, right there. Then again, the addition of the red that tempers it, red being the opposite to green, it's going to temper that and you're going to get some really nice far away, like on the scree slope of a, of a mountain, those really light gray greens that are up there. Look at 
how neutral that is right there. Nice and soft in the middle right there. Okay, so one more. Let's do one more. If you want a really nice subtle green that's to the warm side, try the yellow ochre with the, uh, with the ultramarine blue. That'll give you a really nice warm dark green. Almost, almost a sage color. If we add some white to that, you're going to get a really nice sagey color happening there, which is great for some of those prairie grasses that you need in the front. Right there, look at that. All right, one more, one more. Let's do one more. If we take a little bit of this, a little bit of this, Kegula white, manganese blue hue, and we mix it together, we can make ourselves, well, first of all, we can make ourselves permanent green deep. So right, right here, that's permanent green deep. You can buy that in a tube. Who needs it? I just made it. Don't need to buy it in a tube. Go away, tube. All right, permanent green deep. But with the addition of white to that, a little bit more blue, and a little bit of white to that, We can make ourselves a really nice light turquoisey color. Blue. Look at those turqu look at that turquoise right there. Beautiful turquoise colors right there. Now watch. When I add a little bit of red to that to back it off, look at that nice neutral color for the underside of leaves. If you're painting a bunch of plants and you want the underside, that cooler underside, you can use that right there. Look at how neutral I can make this with the addition of more red to it. Right in here I can make some really nice neutral sort of greens inside of there. That's a whole whack of greens right there. I haven't even done this yet. Let's do this then real quick. One last one, one last one. All right. If we just mix ultramarine blue and tad yellow light together, right there, it's going to give us just about any moderate green you could ever want right there. And then you can, as the addition of the cad yellow deep, look, you can warm that right up over to that side. If you want to cool it off, you can take it to the blue side here. Way over here. And look what you're going to get now on the cool side. That's just about viridian right there. You can make a viridian green out of that right there. That's a whole bunch of different greens you can make, and I just made those in like two minutes. Okay, thanks for coming up. I hope you're green with envy. <laughs>